Hi, Theo here from ElectroFX.com on behalf of Ovo.CZ. In this video we will be looking at professional mean Renko charting software. This is also known as median Renko or even sometimes better Renko. And I will demonstrate how to install the software and then how it all works. If you'd like to follow along, go and grab yourself a free trial of this software over at Ovo.CZ and while you're there you should also grab the free Omnia Remote and Omnia Auto Range indicators because I'll also show you how they work. Both the trial and the full versions of this Mean Renko charting software are the same file so once your trial period expires you will simply just enter a license key and you can keep on using it. The free trial period is 15 days and then every 90 days you will get another 15 day trial just in case you're revisiting the Mean Renko after taking some time away from it. If you've already purchased a license key then get that email handy because I'm going to quickly show you how to activate the software and it's also worth mentioning at this stage that a license for this software is included with a VIP membership at electroeffects.com. Now with the software downloaded and your MetaTrader platform open we can install the indicators and the best way to do this is to go to file open data folder this will open the location that this instance of MetaTrader uses for its files and the location will be very different for, for everyone so don't uh, pay attention to mine. The only important thing is that you go to File Open Data Folder. Once there go into the MQL4 folder and then into the Indicators folder. So I've already pasted these indicators in but you will need to paste them in right now. Once they are pasted in you can shut that window down and open up your navigator and then you want to right click in the indicators tree here and click refresh and then you will see these three indicators that have been placed in there. If you hover your mouse over the top you will see the version number it's just one way of doing that you can see we're on 207.002 version and a couple of steps that you should do before proceeding is going into tools options and we need to adjust a couple of things first of all in the expert advisors tab make sure that you check allow DLL imports this is going to make it a, a global selection instead of doing this on a case by case basis and in the charts selection by default MetaTrader never gives you a large number for maximum bars in charts so you might want to increase that right now I personally use 380,000 bars because when you think about that 380,000 M1 bars ends up being just over a year 380,000 M5 bars would be over five years so uh, it's certainly plenty but you know that's just my my opinion and you can raise that number as you see fit once you're done just click OK now we can head on over to file new charts We'll go to the euro dollar, we're just opening up a, a brand new chart here, it's on the H1 by default and we can actually run this mean Renko bar software on any chart we like, any standard time frame. I'm going to use the M1 just out of habit and I can drag that mean Renko bar onto the chart or I could double click it. The about tab will just show you the version you're on and give you some information there. The common tab you'll see allow DLL imports has been checked and that is because of the previous step that we took. If we hadn't have done that it would not be checked and you would need to do so um, manually right now for the software to work. In the inputs tab this is where you need to make all of your settings. The first one is the actual size of your mean Ren Renko bars. This is in points and not pips so this 100 value is 10 pips, it's 10.0 pips. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with mean Renko bars is that the pip value is from the middle of the bar to the close which means it's half the bar and so effectively the 10 pip mean Renko would be a 20 pip bar. The output a uh, time frame is something that you can select. If you don't select anything it will choose one for you. If you just use a number like we might want to say well these are 20 pip bars so I'm just going to add the number 20 there. This will basically be an M20. If I wanted to use H20 or D20 I'd need to specify the H or the D 
uh, otherwise we're just going to stick to the M prefix. The number of offline candles is 1000. That will fill up any HD monitor these days, but if you want more historical data on your mean Renko chart, then you'll need to increase that number. The session control has two options. You can keep the chart continuous or break it into sessions. I like to keep the chart continuous and we'll revisit that in a second so I can show you the difference. Paste activation code, this is self-explanatory. If you have a license key, this is where it needs to go. If you don't have a license key, it doesn't matter. Uh, the software will still function and put you on a 15-day trial. So if you do have a license key, then you will have received an email that looks something like that. The license key will be in the middle. It obviously won't be XXX, but it will be a proper key. You'll want to copy it and then come in here and paste it in. Now you'll only have to do this one time on your machine, you'll never have to do it again. It's just to assign this key to your machine. So if we delete that for now, I've already licensed this software to this machine so I don't need to do that. The final user variable is not something you need to worry about and once we're all done here we can just click OK. As you can see the chart generator is now on this M1 chart um, you know it can be an M5, it can be an M15, none of that makes a difference but I'll leave it on the M1. The first value here is the the size of the the, the bars that we've assigned. Don't forget mean Renko so it means half the bar is 10 pips. If I wanted to change that to 20 pips I'd put 200, 20.0 pips and I'd click enter and now it would be a 20 pip mean Renko chart which would be 40 pip bars. I'll put it back to 10 though so it's in line with our M20 right there. The X clearly uh, just going to remove the indicator from the chart. It's a fast way to do that and this button here is actually going to open up your offline chart. I just clicked that M20. So if I go back to the feed chart because we have a couple more things to look at here the system message shows that this is registered to me. If you're running a trial, it will tell you that you're running a trial and how long you have left on that trial, the date of expiry. And if you're running an older version of this software, then you'll get a message here telling you that a newer version is available. So if that was the case and we needed a newer version, I would simply go to File open data folder MQL4 indicators. Remember this is where the indicators are. I would download the new versions and then copy paste in here. But because we're updating something that we have running right now, I'm going to want to shut down MetaTrader first and I'll take the new files that I've downloaded, the updated versions, and I just paste that in there like that and then overwrite the previous ones. Then I can go back and start the MetaTrader up again. Now that MetaTrader has launched again, if you did have a message here telling you you needed to update, then it would just go back to saying that it's registered to yourself or you're in trial mode again. The next thing to look at now is the actual chart itself. If I make this full screen, I'll apply a, a simple template. And a cool little feature worth mentioning is if you create a template and you call it offline, then whenever you create these offline charts and launch them, it will automatically apply that template for you. Um, not something that I use, but a very cool feature. So I've just applied a simple template. The first thing that we can look at is the Omnia remote. And if I drag that onto the chart, two options, enable server clock display or mark unreliable chart parts. I'll leave them both on so we can take a look at them. As I click OK, you'll see the clock is down in the right side and the unreliable chart parts is this gray area. It's telling me that this is an unreliable chart part. If I don't want to see that, I would just go in and switch off unreliable chart parts. And if I didn't want to see the clock, I could turn that off there. Once I close, as you see, that's now gone. I'll show you now uh, why this is an unreliable chart part by using this sessions toggle right here. When it comes to MetaTrader, if we go into the standard common set properties of your chart and switch on period separators, you'll see that here we have the period separators for each day. Uh, this is 
been the whole day period, so there's some very minimal activity there. But I mean, this is your average day right here. This here is Monday, so it's after a weekend. And if I switch the session toggle on, you'll notice that we actually had a gap over the weekend, and so that is why it was an unreliable chart part. Uh, what what we do when we we don't use sessions and we keep the chart continuous is it just kind of smooths that out for you and paints in these bars that actually wouldn't be there. Okay, so it depends on your preference uh, whether you use that or not. There is a feed button here which just brings the chart to the forefront and you can actually just click the M20 button to go back. You can obviously do that with MetaTrader tabs down here, but if you had quite a few charts open it's just another way to navigate around it's quite smooth and we can also change the size of the bricks here on the the chart itself on the fly so that's uh, just a little option for you there click OK I'm actually going to just load the simple template one more time put the remote back on and the other feature the other freeware that's available is the Omnia Auto Range now this is quite simply going to help you determine which brick size is best for each pair. Now some people use you know a 10 pit bar for every pair which I mean it's not that logical to me because uh, each pair is moving at slightly different pace, slightly different magnitude of pit movements are going on and they just have a different volatility so if you'd like to try and have the software determine the right size Renko bar for you automatically then you can use this software. The time frame for calculation is basically what you're trying to do here is have the software look at you know what is the average pip movement per five minute bar over a period of time and you know that that's an extreme example so you would probably want to use something like perhaps a 30 minute time frame and then you'd say well because it's median Renko and the size of the bars are actually half bars we could multiply it by 0 0.5 and then minutes to calc minutes for the calculation we could use a month's worth of data so 28,800 I mean that's roughly four times five days four weeks five days a week it's about an, a month of, of data and we'd like to update that once a day you'd put in 1440 minutes so once a day based on the last month the average pit movement of a 30 minute bar multiplied by 0 0.5 okay I click OK it waits a second it's determined that the value is 6.0 pips and it's resized that for you. It will do so once a day in case it's uh, changing, in case this particular pair is getting more volatile or less volatile and it will adapt for you. The only important thing to note is that just because we selected a 30 minute time frame doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be at that 30 minute time frame speed because we're talking about median Renko bars here and there's no sort of time delay. It's only printing bars if there's movement. So it's going to be a lot tidier, a lot more compact than that 30 minute chart that we're using for the calculation. Okay, so you can play around with that. Uh, there's certainly many, many options there. It's just a nice way of doing it so that, you know, you're not trying to say that one size Renko works for all pairs. So that is all of the features available. If you have any questions about this software then just pop, uh, pop them in the comments below the video and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can.